Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I will make a review of 3D Q1 Pro 3D printer. After using it a bit over half a year, I've made over 600 hours on it and my unit is from the pre-order batch, so if you are buying one now, some things are improved versus my printer. Some numbers for the beginning. The build plate is 245 times 245 times 240. 20k max acceleration, 400 mm per second top speed, direct jive extruder, dual Z motors, heated chamber, and for $49 price at the time of recording. Starting with advantages and what I like about this printer. It runs clipper, so there is access to all the parameters and settings over the Wi-Fi. Print quality is really good and I didn't have any complaints after 600 hours. For better comparison, it prints as good as my Bamboo Lab P1P, but the dimensional precision is even better here. I often print parts that need to fit perfectly and with Q1 Pro I'm getting better results. Bed leveling is fully automatic, so there is no need for setting it up with piece of paper, but in case something is wrong, you can change the Z offset directly on the screen. In my case the first layer is perfect and the most reliable from all the printers I own. Dual Z motors also helps a lot here and compensates any imperfections very efficiently. Built-in camera is pretty smooth and placed in a good position. Monitoring the print works well in the web browser but also in the 3D phone app. It's quite simple app without as many features as Bamboo Lab but it's useful and works without any issues. The screen on the 3D printer is a touch screen. It looks nice, layout is clear and it's easy to find all the options, but it could be more responsive. When you have more projects loaded on the screen, it can be a bit laggy, because it shows also the thumbnail for each print, not just the name of the file. Chamber heater works really well. It's heating the chamber easily to 55 Celsius degree, so printing ABS or ASA is as easy as PLA here, and I'm not getting any warping. Nylon is also not a problem, since nozzle heats up to 350 degrees and bed 220. It's really a printer beast when it comes to printing more demanding materials. Now moving to cons. As I mentioned before, the touchscreen can be a bit laggy when browsing through files. Another one is the slicer. Although the new 3D slicer is much better than the old one, it's still missing some options and a lot of options are not easily accessible and you need to look for them in the settings. From a good side, there is a profile for Q1 Pro in the Orca slicer. Both slicers also allows you to pair with the printer over IP address and send prints remotely directly from the slicer. Personally, the biggest problem for me is the printer's size. It's 477 x 467 x 489 mm and weight of 20 kg, what feels like not the most efficient way to use the space with its 245 x 245 bed. It probably won't matter much for a lot of users, but for me it is a drawback. I also didn't find here a carbon or HEPA filter, what is a bit strange if the printer is targeted for printing ABS and ASA. Last problematic aspect is the spool holder placement. It's on the back what makes it hard to replace the spool with the printer's dimensions if you have it against the wall. I printed for myself a different spool holder that works much better. Few words about reliability. As I said in the beginning, my Q1 Pro has around 600 hours made so far and I'm using it in my print farm mostly for PETG prints. I had no issues with print quality or first layer for over 400 hours and then I started getting really strange artifacts and vibrations on the prints. I contacted 3D support about that and they identified the problem. Toolhead was a bit loose on the bearing. Support responded very quickly with instruction video of how to fix it and after 10 minutes issue disappeared completely. Remember that I have the first batch printer, so this problem most likely is already fixed 
and I really have to place CD support here for quick and quality help. Now let's give the printer some points. I divided the score to five categories. Print quality, first layer, user experience, features and price. And in each category the printer can get maximum 10 points. So print quality, 8 out of 10. I'm getting same quality here as on Bamboo Lab P1P, therefore it's the same score. Default filament settings are most of the time perfect and input shaping does an amazing job, so it really can make nice looking details. First layer, 8.5 out of 10. It never happened to me that print failed because of bad first layer, and dual Z motors are compensating the imperfections really well, therefore it's half point more than on Bamboo Lab. User experience, 6 out of 10. The printer looks pretty average and is a bit too big in relation to the build print bed size. Touch screen can be laggy, 3D slicer is not as good as Bamboo Slicer and phone app is missing some options. Features, 8 out of 10. It has a good quality and smooth camera, clipper, dual Z axis, touch screen, filament renault sensor with tangle detection, input shaping, auxiliary fan, 32 GB of built-in memory, phone app and most importantly actively heated chamber. Finally price, 9 out of 10. For 449 as it's priced right now, I don't see any other printer on the market that can beat it with the amount of features and print quality. So to sum it up, can I recommend Q1 Pro and would I buy it again? Generally, yes. If you have some experience with 3D printers, just buy it. If you are a beginner, I think there are more user-friendly machines on the market. Also, if you are printing mostly in PLA, it might be a bit of an overkill and it's worth taking a look at other printers that might not require as much space, since Q1 is really big and heavy in comparison to its bed size. From other side, if you are printing a lot of ABS, ASA, nylon and more demanding filaments, that's a printer for you. In this price you won't find anything else that can handle more demanding material so well and print it in so good quality. That's all from me in this video, please share your thoughts and experiences if you own this printer and feel free to ask in the comment section if you have any question. See you and thanks for watching.